He's cooked for President Obama and Oprah Winfrey. Spent time with basketball legend Shaquille O'Neal and one of, run one of the biggest restaurants in Times Square. Here with us now is New York-based Kiwi chef Anthony Hoy Fong. Anthony, great to have you with us. Back on the hot seat now. Um, nice. Thanks for your time in the kitchen. <laughs> we were talking about your career path in the kitchen. You didn't start till you were quite late. Can you tell us about how you got started? Yeah, it was, it was a funny path to get to where I am now, I guess. I kind of had three careers before that. I started off as an IT consultant, and then after that, then I, I ran uh, a fruit and vegetable shop with my mum and dad, you know, traditional Chinese upbringing, fruit and veg. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, um, and then when it came to my time to do an OE, um, you know, all my mates were shooting off to London and all that, and I'd been to the States before and kind of fell in love with it, so I thought, right, I want to go to the States and do my OE there. And so um, the only way I could get a visa to go there was to get, get a, um, a student visa, <laughs> and I always like cooking, so I thought I'll, I'll enrol in culinary school. Boom. <laughs> so you kind of fell into it, didn't you? Totally fell yeah. into it. I kind of about it. Yeah, I kind of fell into it. I'd, I'd always loved cooking. Right. It had always been my passion, but um, yeah, in terms of like like planning it out, if, I, if I'd sat down and planned it out, I probably would never have done it. I probably yeah. would have talked myself out of it. Like you're obviously pretty good at it, though. <laughs> yeah, so what you got to. I come from a big family of good cooks. Like my my grandma's a, an amazing cook, and my mum's an incredible cook, and and we all do it by taste, no recipe. So I've, I've, I've kind of got good instincts, I think, from them. It sounds so. like you really have. I want to ask you about cooking for Obama because you cook for a lot of famous people. Yeah. Is it what is it like when you cook for him? Do, uh, like, do, do people come and taste the food? I always yeah, imagine it's, it's like some sort of movie <laughs> where they come down and they do the taste and like, is it going to kill the president <laughs> of America? <laughs> it's a little bit like that. It's funny, but what, everyone thinks it's really glamorous, but it's, it's public sector. And, and what I do for them, it's, it's the day-to-day -day stuff. It's not like it's a, it's a fancy like gala, luncheon event on the lawn. What, where I am is in the executive West Wing, so it's, it's the day-to-day -day grind. It's, it's feeding the staff, it's feeding the president. Um, so, yeah, yeah, he does have someone that tastes the food for him. Um, you know, he has his aides that come down and get the food from the kitchen when it's ready. Um, but it's pretty unglamorous. It's, it's like if you've ever stayed in a, you know, like a three-star hotel, you know. Little tray, like <laughs> single stem rose on the corner. <laughs> we get the rose, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you know, there's a phone in the, in the corner of the, in the kitchen and it rings when he's ready for his food. And someone picks it up and like, boss is ready for his lunch. Boom, someone grabs the plate, puts it on the... Trey, Trey goes out the door, that's it. That's oh. highly unglamorous. He is, isn't it? Yeah, he's, I, work, he's a busy man, he's working, right? <laughs> he's got a few things to I, do. I love these stories about the celebrities, though. So, Oprah, what's she like? And what were you doing on her show? So, she was down to earth. Um, I was actually on the show, it was a, it was a sandwich cook-off contest. Um, we did a, um, a slow-cooked pork shoulder sandwich with telegio cheese, cranberry onion jam. Mm. Sounds like um, quite but, a sandwich. Yeah, but, but you know, look, mate, they're all, they're all down to earth. They're all just normal people, so... Well, the you know. thing about you, though, is that you're just a Kiwi bloke, aren't you? Yeah. You go in there and you don't sound like you'd be particularly overawed by any of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's funny, because everyone says it, but, you know, what we're like as Kiwis, you can't, everyone's the same. You just kind of get in there and keep your head down, do your job, and, and <laughs> I guess it, it kind of helps you, because I guess if you go in there and you're kind of overwhelmed and you act weird around people, then... You know, then they act weak to you, so... You wouldn't be where you are today. <laughs> yeah, so good Kiwi yeah. attitude. OK, I want to yeah. find out more about your restaurant in um, New York. So if we yeah. were going to New York, what do we look out for? So I've, I've, worked, I've got a couple of places that I work on all over the country, from Vegas to New York. Um, most recent project um, that I've work, been working on the last six months is a, a kitchen and bar called The 20 Bar in uh, Brooklyn, Williamsburg. Uh, it's a very cool, hip area. It's kind of where the whole hipster scene began. You know, lots, lots of urban woodsmen walking around, lots of... Lots of... Bar lots of like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's very cool. And, and you know what's funny about that is, is you get out of the subway now and you pop up in Williamsburg and everyone looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> so when it, when it started, no one's alternative anymore. They all look the same. So. <laughs> With their plaid shirts. Yeah, yeah they, they all have the plaid shirts, <laughs> skinny jeans tucked into their boots. Um, but anyway, so I opened a bar there. Um, it's on the corner of Grand and Bedford. Um, really cool spot, it's about 75 seats. Um, me and my partner, uh, Jacob, he's, a, he's another Kiwi boy, down from uh, Tūrangi away, and he's been in the States for 10 years, and we, we just crossed paths, and um, we opened a couple of weeks ago. So oh, it's, nice. Yeah, it's a pretty cool spot. Any plans to ever move back here? Always, always. I've got to talk to my wife about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> and now that you've got a little 18-month-old as well, do you yes. have that sort of inkling to come home occasionally? I mean, I mean, it's funny. Right now, we're very fortunate. So I come back two or three times a year because, you know, to see the family, see my grandma, make sure our little daughter, August, gets to spend time with her family and, and my mum and dad. So um, always, always want to come back. But at the moment, we're, we're fortunate where I can still do both. So... Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very lucky. You are awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Thank come you. and visit you in New York. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I get a lot of visitors, and uh, from all, all places, and people referring their friends, and, and I always take good care of them when they oh, come. Oh, good. Now we'll, we, so, we'll, we, we'll get on a junket to that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us, Anthony. Cool. Thank you so much. All the best in New York, and best with the family. Enjoy the rest of your time in New Zealand.